There is a program to bring back the Neanderthal. Really? Yeah. However, uh, it, at Harvard, there's a group looking at what it would take to bring back a Neanderthal boy, let's say. Then the question is, what do you do with the boy afterwards? You, do you let him into Harvard? Uh, do you uh, put him in a zoo? Uh, what do you do with a Neanderthal boy? Is it immoral right. to put a Neanderthal into a zoo? That seems a little... Like, what if they decided to create an Australopithecus? You know, and, mm -hmm. and bring that back to life. I mean, aren't we a better version of that? I mean, didn't, like, didn't evolution show? Like, that sucks. You don't want to. And so if that thing exists, what are we going to do? Just leave it out there in Africa? Let it roam around, get eaten by lions? Well, th this is where ethics comes in. Right. You know, at what point does a robot or a Neanderthal become ethically equivalent to a human? Right. Uh, this is something that the ethicists have not, not uh, worked out. How close have they gotten with this Neanderthal thing? Uh, well, you know, we've sequenced all the genes of a Neanderthal now. So the Neanderthal is not a mystery anymore. All the genes have been sequenced. And like I mentioned, at Harvard, there's talk about what it would take to bring back a Neanderthal child. And uh, it's something that is conceivable, but of course no one's done it yet because all sorts of ethical problems are raised because this Neanderthal feels, it could feel pain. It could eventually learn how to talk to you and express its feelings. And do you want to put it in a cage? Obviously not. Think about that. But what do we know enough about their intellectual capabilities? Could a Neanderthal exist well, in our society? Well, their brains are bigger than our brains. Right. Uh, what they could do with that, we're not sure, of course. Is it but, possible they were smarter than us? They didn't have tools like we did, right? They had like, tools, but, but they more didn't primitive. have the same. Yeah, they didn't have fluted tips of like stone flint spearheads and things along those lines. Uh, yeah, there was no uh, large set of tools that they had at their disposal, but they did definitely have tools. Yeah, and they probably had a language. They were probably capable of language, and uh, they probably communicate with each other. And they made it with us, so. Uh, you know, and they grew up too. When they mated with us, the progeny were not killed. Right. The progeny grew up to become members of the tribe. And so you realize that they're closer to us than we realize. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't put that in a zoo, but I mean, what would you do? Would you have that young boy and have him compete with Homo sapiens? I mean, would it, would it be the same? Would it be able to interfere? We, we don't know. That would be a crazy experiment that I think most people would think would be very unethical. Yeah, but there's an ethics involved. Same thing, once we have robots that can feel pain, then there's another ethical issue of do you want to have robots exposed to pain? What happens if robots then demand rights? Right. Rights to limit the amount of pain that they suffer carrying out tasks for a human being. Because remember, we're going to be asking robots to do all sorts of tasks which are dangerous. That's why we've invented them. And, you know, they may feel pain as a consequence. And then we have to ask ourselves, how far do we want robots to feel pain if they say, I'm, I'm hurting, I'm, stop it, I, I feel pain. Are we going to stop it? Do they have rights? What if they become emotionally attached to you? What if you have a robot that calls you every day when you're on vacation?